Good afternoon, everybody. I am Drew Carter from the Office of Admission at Holy Cross. I am super excited that uh, you all have chosen to join us today. Um, today's topic is um, obviously it's a popular one and it is a timely one. And I hope that um, the information that I shared today can help you think about the college search process and, and also the college application process and things you can do right now to strengthen uh, your application. I'm gonna make my background here a little more interesting, make it a little more festive, a little more Holy Cross. Um, you know, one of the, one of the um, uh, things I wanted to mention before we get started, first is that closed captioning is available. Um, also, uh, if you have questions as we're going along, put them in the Q&A box. I'm happy to uh, do my best to address those as we go along and, um, and uh, perhaps even answer some of those at the end. One of the most popular questions we get asked in our job in the world of college admissions is how do you decide who gets in? So many people are afraid to ask that question. Um, it tends to be the question everybody wants to know the answer to. The reality is though, that there's about uh, 3,000 four-year college and universities in the US. And every single year, all of us in the world of college admissions we all weigh the same exact factors when we make decisions uh, on applications. And you know what those factors are. And if you took the time, you could make a list um, of the factors that every school looks at when they make decisions on application. There might be you know, 15, 20, 30 factors on that list that schools will look at. Um, today, we wanna focus on uh, really five of them. Um, and um, you know, the, while you could make a list of all of these factors, whether it's 15, 20, or 30 factors, the reality is, is that be, just because each factor holds one place on the list, that does not mean that all the factors hold the same weight in the decision. The information that will come from your academic profile, what high school you attend, what courses you've signed up for, how you performed in those courses, that information, that is the, the cake. And everything else on that list is, it's just frosting. But let's talk about your kid. Let's talk about your academic profile. Let's talk about your transcript. On average, when a college admissions office looks at a high school student's transcript, on average, they're looking, gonna look at three and a quarter years. Some schools look at three years, some schools look at three and a half years. I'm gonna split the difference and say three and a quarter years. Freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, senior fall. Now, I'm assuming all of you are high school juniors, which means freshman year, sophomore year, and half of junior year is done. It is behind you. As my dad would say, the hay is in the barn. And as we would reply, we don't know what that means. We don't have a barn, nor do we have any hay. But what he really meant was, uh, I think in New England, we would say that ship has sailed, right? So you have a disappointing grade on your transcript from chemistry sophomore year or Spanish freshman year. You have to let that go. That grade matters to us when we evaluate your transcript, but it no longer matters to you because what you need to do, the first of five ways you can um, increase your chances for acceptance, the way, first of five ways you can improve, you can impact your college application is to number one, focus on the road ahead. Your effort and energy in the classroom during your junior spring and senior fall it is the first of five things that you control. Because while college and universities look at three and a quarter years, every college knows, I forget it, not even every college, everybody knows, every person knows, the student that we get on our campus as a college freshman will most closely resemble the student that we see at the end of the transcript. So all of those grades behind you on that transcript, ninth grade, 10th grade, the first half of 11th grade, let it go. It matters to the world of college admissions. But what you should be doing is focusing on the road ahead. We're talking about a, a sprint, not a marathon, and show colleges the kind of student that they want, the kind of student who can um, rebound from a disappointing grade sophomore year in a, in a course that's not their favorite and what, how they can improve their performance junior year, the kind of student who is maybe starting to identify areas of interest and excelling in those areas, the kind of student who, as their strength of curriculum increases, so does their performance and you control it. This lingering, powerful aftertaste to your transcript. It is the lean in your transcript and it is the first of five ways you can impact your application. And it is the first thing that I hope 
you can focus on. Now, if you listen to um, too many admissions uh, information sessions, or if you read too many guidebooks, you start to think that applying to college is just about your transcript, particularly with the lack of uh, standardized testing right now. Um, and I am going to, I'm one of those people who's going to say your transcript is the most important document, but you are more than just your transcript. It's a big part of who you are in our mind, but you are more than just that. In some ways, think of your transcript as sort of like your skeleton. It's a big part of who you are, but it's not everything. And if you ever looked at two skeletons next to each other, you know they're different people, but they sure do look alike. And what if you took two transcripts and you put two transcripts next to each other? Would you be able to tell the difference? What's the difference between an 87 at one school and a B plus at the other school? What's the difference between English 10 at that school and sophomore English at the other school? What's the difference between advanced courses at this school and accelerated courses at this other school? It's confusing. And that's just two skeletons or two transcripts. What if we looked at 200 transcripts or 200 skeletons? What about 2,000? What about at some of the big schools, 20,000, 50,000, 70,000 applications for one year, 70,000 transcripts, 70,000 skeletons? Let me answer the question. Adding greater volume, it does not bring clarity. It brings greater confusion. It becomes a mess, a maze of letters and numbers and decimals and abbreviations. And, and it is our job in the world of college admissions to take that skeleton and to fill in the rest of the parts, to put on the flesh and the skin and the hair and the eye color and the character and the personality and the perspective. And how do we do that? It's going to sound creepy. We read about you. So we do, we read about you, but not in a creepy way. We read about what you've done with your free time choices on the application, theater, arts, drama, music, service, sports, clubs, and leadership. We look at what that one teacher wrote about you in the recommendation, what you like in the classroom, what the other teacher wrote about you in their recommendation, what the guidance counselor says you're like at your school, and then we get to your essay. Then we get to your essay, and that's the part in this, that's the part in this painting where all of a sudden the paintbrush is in your hands. So, the most important part for you to think about when you start to think about your essay, the most important thing is the second way you can impact your application is you need to write on the topic you want to write about. Not the topic the guidebooks say you should write about, not the topic your older brother wrote about a few years ago, and most importantly, not the topic your mother thinks you should write about. None of those will make your best essay. What will make your best essay is choosing a topic you want to write about. We read great essays every year on stupid, stupid topics. And we read horrible essays on great topics. We read great essays every year about grandmas and we read terrible essays every year about grandmas. It's not grandma's fault. There is no connection between the topic of your essay and the quality of your essay, in spite of what everyone will tell you. And I'm gonna repeat that. There is no connection between the topic of your essay and the quality of your essay. But here's the important part. Here's the connection. There is a direct connection between how you feel about your topic and the quality of your essay. You're gonna write the best essay on the topic you want to write about. So the second way you can impact your application is choosing a topic you want to write about. And while that is not something you should be worried about in February of your junior year, you do need to adopt this mindset because so many adults are going to have ideas for you about what you should write about. And you should be polite. And you should listen to them. and You should smile and you should thank them. And then you should forget whatever they said because you will write the best essay on the topic you want to write about. And I know here's this great challenge. You have spent your entire high school career writing essays for a well-known audience. You write essays for your English teacher and your history teacher, people who you see daily who you meet with all the time, who explain their expectations, who give you detailed instructions for your writing assignments. And then all of a sudden, the most important writing assignment of your high school career is your college essay, and it's written for a stranger who says nothing to you, but write a free topic, 650 words or fewer. So there's this paralyzing anxiety about writing for a stranger with no expectations, and you have no idea about how that reader is gonna to react to your essay and to that last point. To that last point, I say, you're wrong. You are wrong. You have every ability to anticipate our reaction to your essay. Look in the mirror when you write that essay. That is our reaction. 
If you're bored writing your essay, we are going to be bored reading your essay. If it's like pulling hair to write your essay, unfortunately, it's going to be like pulling hair to read your essay. That's the bad news, okay? Oh, that's the bad news. Let me tell you the good news now. If you enjoy writing that essay, we're going to enjoy reading it. If you find meaning or mojo or something writing that essay, that's exactly what we will find reading that essay. So remember, the, the, the second tip, the important part was writing on the topic you want to write about. And then the third tip is bringing to the experience the emotion that you want us to have when reading it. Have fun writing it. Let it be a meaningful experience. Let it be, let you find some mojo in that. Whatever you find, that is what we will find. But you should not find boredom or a hair pulling experience. None of those things are going to help you realize your best essay. Okay. So that was the third way you can impact your application. The first was your effort and energy in the classroom this spring and next fall. The second is thoughtfully choosing the topic of your essay, the topic that you want to write about. The third is having an experience when writing it, whether it's fun or meaningful or whatever that you want us to have when, when reading that essay. The fourth way you can impact your, um, the fourth way you can impact your application is by thoughtfully demonstrating your engagement. Okay, there's lots of ways you can do it. And I wanna to say to you, especially even now during the pandemic, you can do that easier than before. You can attend, geez, a virtual session on a Friday during February vacation about uh, five ways to improve your application. You can go to virtual tours and information sessions and email correspondence and online chats. And if in-person um, activities become available, you can do those as well. Um, interviews, I wanna say a word about interviews. There are obstacles to having interviews and most of them are needless. Most students are turned off by um, the opportunity to interview because uh, they're confused um, by all the different policies that colleges have. But the reality is, is that if a school offers interviews, they make their policies readily available on their website and they're going to email you about their policies. And they're gonna email you about their policies several times. So this idea that it's so confusing, some schools offer interviews, some schools don't, that should not be an obstacle, which leaves just one remaining obstacle to you having an interview when you apply to college, and that's urban legend. It's the trick questions you think you might be asked, right? If you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be? If you were a fruit or vegetable, what kind of fruit or vegetable would you be? And none of these questions exist. They've all been, all been posted on the internet by your older siblings just to freak you out, okay? Um, the proof is I interviewed a student several years ago from my hometown, Louisville, Kentucky, and I felt this sort of kinship uh, interviewing someone from my hometown. And for the first five minutes of our conversation, she reminded me so much of young women from Louisville. Um, and she had her hands folded on her lap, except that they weren't folded successfully because they were shaking too bad. It was obvious to me that, that she was nervous. And because I felt this kinship, because we're both from Louisville, I asked her, I said, you know, were you nervous to come to campus today? And um, this was several years ago, and she, I still remember her response. And she said, yeah, just for the interview. I said, okay, let's unpack that a little bit. What about the idea of an interview made you so nervous? And she said, well, I just did a practice interview with my guidance counselor. Okay, I said, I think your counselor probably um, did that practice interview with you to, to help you get more relaxed. She said, well, we couldn't think of what kind of questions you were gonna ask. So we looked online and we found out what your first question is, but neither of us could think of a good answer. Now, I never know what my first question is, but this young woman and her counselor had gone onto this message board, and I'm not gonna name the message board because I don't want you ever to look at it because it is 100% wrong 100% of the time. But they had gone on this message board and they found out that Drew Carter at Holy Cross asks this as his first question in an interview. I'll play the role of me. You play the role of the student and think of what your answer would be. This is how she thought the interview would start. I would say, welcome to Holy Cross. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, welcome to my office. As you can see on my desk, there's a box. And I know you can't see what's in the box, but let me assure you, there are several things. And one of those things is identical to you. What do you think that thing is? This is an insane question. It is a ridiculous question. A question I've never heard of before. A question I would ever ask. Never, no one would ever ask that question. You will not be asked any questions an admissions interview that you don't already know the answer to because the questions are about you. 
and not just about you, because I guess the box question was about her. The questions are about the things you talk about every single day, your friends and your family, your high school and your hometown, your clubs and your classes, your hopes for college, your dreams for college, your questions about college. This is literally the dialogue you're having every single day. You can have that dialogue with an admissions counselor. It will help you get into college and it will help you learn about college. There are no obstacles to having an interview when you apply to college. Figure out what the school's policies are, whether they offer them or not. And if they do offer them, make sure that you sign up for that interview and you will know that you'll be prepared for all the questions you're gonna be asked because all of the questions are about the things you talk about every day. Thoughtfully demonstrating your interest and engagement to the schools to which you're researching now is gonna help you learn about yourself. It's gonna help you learn about the variety of college experiences out there. And at the same time, at some of those schools, it may add this idea of demonstrated engagement to your application. It is always in your best interest to thoughtfully engage in the search process. Most importantly, because you learn about yourself, but additionally, because it is one of five things you control. Your first was your effort in the classroom. The second was the topic of your essay. The third was the mindset you bring to writing that essay. The fourth was how you demonstrate your engagement to all the schools to which you apply. The fifth and final um, topic that I'm gonna to cover today is how you engage with your teachers right now. I think sometimes high school students think like the recommendations that are sent with their application, they just like appear out of nowhere. They have no idea. They can't imagine what's in those recommendations. And I say the truth is right now, during the second half of your junior year, you are giving your teachers the content for their recommendations that they're gonna write. If you plan on asking a junior year teacher for a recommendation, how they observe you during the second half of your junior year will appear in your recommendations. So the fifth way you can impact your application is this. Think about what you want your recommendations to say about you. Do you want them to say you're hardworking? Do you want them to say you're thoughtful and perceptive? Think about what you want them to say and then show those qualities to your teacher. Demonstrate, give them the material, right? Feed them the content. These recommendations are filled with observations, anecdotes, and adjectives. Give them the content that you want to see in your recommendations. Trust me when I say the second half of junior year is what we read about in recommendations from teachers who wrote, who taught these students during their junior year. You have absolutely every ability to impact your recommendations. Every day you are helping your teachers write their recommendations with how you comport yourself in the classroom, whether it's in person, whether it's hybrid or whether it's virtual, okay? So give your teachers the content that you want to see in these recommendations. Make their job easy for them. Show them a hardworking student. Show them a student who's willing to help others and that's exactly what they will write understand that you are helping them write these recommendations every single day and you can have um, a huge impact on the content that appears in your recommendations okay so let's um let's do a quick summary and then i'm going to take a quick peek through the questions here so the first one the first ways you can strengthen your application was to focus on your work in the classroom between now and the end of your senior fall the second thing you can do is to choose an essay topic that you want to write about Third, understand that our reaction to reading your essay is your reaction when writing that essay. Remember that mirror test. Look in the mirror when you're writing it. That is our reaction. The fourth thing you can do is thoughtfully demonstrate your engagement to each school to which you apply. And finally, give your teachers the content that you want to see in your recommendations. Make their job easy for them, okay? Um, I'm going to take uh, so a few questions that we've got in the um, in the Q&A about essay topics here. Let's see. Um, yeah, so the, the topic of your essay does not need to be um, relevant to your academic major or your main extracurricular activity. Um, it does not. It can be anything you want to write about. Um, you know, the, as far as who should write your recommendations, should it be um, from somebody during your junior year or before? The most important thing 
is that you choose a teacher who knows you well. If that teacher taught you during junior year, that's great. If they taught you during sophomore year, that's great. Um, it does not it does not matter necessarily the year that what they taught you. What matters is how well they know you. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, if you've repeated a grade, if you've transferred schools, understand that that's that's just part of how we read applications. We need to understand context when we read a student's application, and um, we're going to consider every grade you've been in school, every school you've attended, the grading structure at those schools, the courses available, the level of courses available. That is our job to understand the context um, in which you've been studying, if it's been at one school or multiple schools, or if you repeated a grade. So um, that is absolutely our job. And you know we're going to look at trends and developments and how you've grown over time. That is an important part of what we do. And we want to understand the grades that you've earned within the context of each school that you attend. Um, the length of the essay, the common application is going to give you 650 words. Um, you cannot go over 650 words. You can go under 650 words. It is much more about the quality of your essay than the content of, or the um, quality of your essay than how many words you write. Um, I will tell you, I've never counted how many words were in a student's essay, but every essay I've ever read, I've thought about the quality. So it's much less about the quality than how many. Um, as far as which subjects to ask uh, for teachers to write your recommendation, I still believe it should be somebody who knows you well. I also firmly believe that at least one of those teachers should be a teacher who has taught you in one of the five major academic areas. Um, as you get towards the end of your junior year and you start to call a list down of schools you might apply to, you might want to start to look at some of those schools um, to which you're applying to see if they have specific recommendations. Some schools do if you're applying for a certain a business program, they may want a, a recommendation from a certain kind of teacher. If you're applying for an engineering program, they may want a recommendation from a certain kind of teacher. So that's something um, that's important to think about as you move through the second half of your senior year and you get a greater understanding of the schools to which you apply. At most liberal arts schools like Holy Cross, um, we have no recommendations other than we would recommend that the teachers who write on your behalf um, will have taught you during in the five major academic areas. Um, how do we, here's another question. How do we view upward trends in grades? Um, we view them positively, right? There's only three trends, right? Steady, upward, or downward. Um, obviously, you know, starting high and staying high is great, and moving upward um, is great as well. We're going to look at the entire transcript. We're going to look at three and a quarter years, but we know the student we inherit most closely resembles the student that we see at the end of the transcript. And that's the image, that's the aftertaste that you absolutely control. Um, switching languages um, between sophomore and junior year, that would not be a problematic um, course selection to make uh, if you're applying to Holy Cross. Other colleges may have recommendations about achieving a third uh, year within one language or some colleges just have the recommendation that you take three years of a language. So for the most part, that's gonna be okay, but you may want to talk to your guidance counselor about that. Um, the length of interviews, I'd say most college admissions interviews tend to be about um, 20, 30, 40 minutes, somewhere in that range. I think most of my interviews last about 25 minutes. Um, and some of that is based upon how many questions the student has of me about uh, our school. And that's one point I'll make for you. You have an incredible opportunity to gain insight into what that school is like. You'll always be given the opportunity to ask questions at the end, and you should prepare for that moment. <clears throat> the night before an admissions interview, I would recommend you poke around that school's website, take a few minutes, think about some questions that matter to you, and then here's the key, write your questions down. Um, some students don't like to write their questions down because they think that's nerdy. Let me give you some insight into that. Cool matters in high school. What you wear, who your friends are, you know, boy, lunchtime, before school, after school, homecoming, the pep rally, cool. It is, it tends to be a part of the high school experience. Cool is not a part of the experience of applying to college. We don't care about cool. Cool is meaningless to us in the world of college admissions. And I might even take it one step farther. I might even say cool is kryptonite to those of us in the college admissions. 
You know what we spend our time looking for? We travel the world, we meet with students, we read thousands and thousands of applications, and what we're looking for are traces of nerdiness. And I use the, the word nerdy or nerdiness to catch your attention, but I might as well just say preparation, engagement, thoughtfulness, write your questions down. And when you get to the end of that interview and the interviewer asks you, um, do you have any questions for me? You can say, yeah, I thought of some questions ahead of time. I've written them down. That way you are prepared for that moment and you're prepared to really listen to the answers that the interviewer is gonna give you. You're demonstrating the kind of qualities that colleges are looking for. Um, question about what you can do over the summer to boost your application. Um, summer is often a time when students will think about their essay, maybe even start working on drafts of their essay. Um, that is probably the best thing you can do over the summer. Also signing up for virtual opportunities, um, interviews at schools to which you're applying if they're gonna offer those. Um, is there a limit to how many teacher recommendations uh, you can submit for a student? Um, no, sorry, is there a limit to how many teachers write recommendations for a student? Um, the common, it depends on the school. Some schools um, require a certain number. Um, most students will submit beyond the required number. I would not submit more than, I would not submit more than three. Um, you wanna make sure that the time on your application is well spent um, and um, understand that you don't wanna overload that application with too many recommendations. So I would not go beyond that. Um, are there top taboo topics in essays? Um, the one thing I would think about as far as topics, and I, and I did say, and I said forcefully, you can write on any topic that you want to write about. Um, I would recommend using the grandparent test. And here's the grandparent test. Um, can you hand your essay or read aloud your essay to your grandparents? Um, if you feel like it's an appropriate essay for your grandparents, then it's a fine essay to submit to college. If you feel like it may not be an appropriate essay for your grandparents, you may wanna have, there may be second thoughts about submitting that essay. Um, I don't believe uh, there are lots of sayings about you shouldn't write essays about dating, death, or divorce. Um, I don't believe any of that. I don't think, I, some people say you shouldn't write essays about sports or sports injuries. I don't believe that. I think it is possible to write a great essay on any topic. Um, I will say though, that sometimes students pick really big themes for their essay. And 650 words is not a lot of words to write about a really big theme. And you can still pick that theme as your topic, but if you pick a really big theme, your parents' divorce, or moving across the country, something like that. You may just wanna choose a small moment within that theme so that you can accomplish all that you wanna accomplish in 650 words. Um, let me scan through more questions here. What do we look for in extracurricular activities for an applicant? The reality is, is that um, we look through extracurriculars to learn about who the student is, to learn about the choices that they've made, to learn about the kind of person that they might be, we don't give value to some activities over another. We don't think student government is better than a part-time job. We don't think um, athletics is uh, less than music or a theater. We, have, we give no value judgments. We do give a value judgment to involvement, um, whether it's babysitting younger siblings at home, whether it's being uh, having a hobby, or whether it's in organized extracurricular activities. Um, you'll want to just be thoughtful about what you list and understand that we bring up a, a COVID perspective to reading applications now. We understand that activities have changed, that opportunities have changed, and we will bring that perspective when we read your application. And I think that's one of the things that students don't understand as much as they used to, and I think they particularly fear right now. But know that the most important thing that we do when we read your application is to bring perspective to understand your experience so that we can evaluate your credentials. To understand, are you hybrid right now? Are you in-person? Are you remote? To understand what last spring was like. To understand what this spring will be like. To understand what activities have or haven't been available. It is our responsibility in the world of college admissions to understand that perspective so that we can fairly and thoughtfully evaluate credentials. That is our duty. And you do not need to worry about those of us in the world of college admissions taking care of that. We will do that. It has always been our responsibility. It has never been more important 
than it is now. Um, some questions about AP courses and strength of curriculum. We will always evaluate the work that you've done in the classroom as it compares to the grades that are, that are typically given at your school and the courses that have been offered to you. We don't punish students for not taking courses that were not even available to them. Um, we wanna see students who have challenged themselves in the classroom, but at the same time do, done so in a way in which they can still be successful in the classroom and um, done so in a way that they can still retain their mental sanity. Because if you're challenging yourself and you're successful, but you have lost your center, <laughs> um, that you have lost your mind, that is not something uh, we want to see. That's not something you should do. You should seek challenge, but only do so in a way in which you can be successful, in which you can be, um, you can keep um, your identity, keep your personality, and keep your mental health. How much time is spent reviewing applications? That's a great question. That really varies by school. I will say that at Holy Cross, we give a really thoughtful read to your application twice. We have one person read your application, read every document within your application, write a summary of those documents individually. We pass that application along. We have a second person do that as well. Some applications, it takes less time to read because it's materials we're more familiar with, schools are more familiar with. Um, and also understand that there's something we're really good at. We do a lot of that. And so we do get good at reading applications. Um, and so that is a, a part of what we do. Other schools are going to read really fast. Um, we read probably a little bit slower. It's tough to estimate. Some, some go quickly, some take a long time. I don't know if there's an average length of time. I will say that you can, you can believe that every document you submit will be considered as a part of your application. That's this concept of holistic review, all parts matter. That does not mean that all parts count the same. Academic profile is gonna be most important, um, but, but we will consider all, all the um, documents that are submitted. Um, one way you can stand out in your interview, I think number one, you can sign up for an interview. Number two, um, smiles are a good thing. Um, trying to be comfortable. I will say virtual interviews, I think they've gone really, really well. Students seem really comfortable interviewing at home as opposed to in the admissions office. So um, I think that you don't need to worry about virtual interviews. And then the last thing I would say is um, preparing questions ahead of time. I don't think it needs to be more than two or three questions. I would recommend writing them down so that you can remember them and so that you really can thoughtfully listen to the answers given. I think that's the best way to stand out in an interview, just being yourself. Um, and most schools will provide you the information that you need um, and all of the content you want to understand about signing up for an interview on their website. Um, we, there are plenty more questions. Some of them um, we would be more than happy to handle offline. I'm going to call it a day for today's webinar. You guys have been great. It is a Friday. Um, I know many of you are on school vacation. I wanted you to enjoy your Friday. I want you to enjoy your school vacation. Thank you so much for coming to today's webinar. Know that today's webinar and all the webinars we've done this week are archived on our website. I would encourage you to check them out, show them to your parents, show them to your friends. Um, this was all content we wanted to provide for high school juniors around the country, and we hope it's been useful. Uh, email us with additional questions. Email me with questions. My contact information is on the website. Send me any emails that you like, any questions that you have. I'd be more than happy to answer those questions offline, and provide any service that I can. Um, thank you again for coming today. Have a great weekend, be safe and be in touch.